Hello friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and today we are kicking off another reading vlog and this reading vlog is for Memoir May. <laughs> So I know that by now May is uh, well underway. In fact, we are on the back half of it now, which is um, a bit concerning. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the month of May has been really moving very fast and I still have so much I want to read. Um, but basically what happened is I was in the middle of filming another just like a casual reading vlog and I was reading uh, this book, The Witching Year. A memoir of Ernest Fumbling Through Modern Witchcraft by Diana Helmuth. So I was talking about this book in that vlog and then I realized that the next book I was going to read is actually Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner and then also on top of that my book club book for this month is The Night Parade a speculative memoir by Jamie Nakarama Lin and then so yeah I just had this moment where I was like oh my gosh they are all memoirs. This would fit into a reading vlog to read them all together perfectly. And I did actually think that was pretty funny because last year I had this big plan that I was going to do a reading vlog that was Memoir May. And I even bought Crying in H Mart for that vlog and it ended up not happening. I ended up not doing it. So the fact that it happened this year kind of accidentally, it was just very serendipitous and I was very happy about that situation. So um, these are the three books that I'm going to be talking to you about in this vlog. I might, maybe, maybe I might squeeze one more in there because I had another book that I bought last year to do during that vlog and I still haven't read it. So it's like, uh, it, it feels like I should kind of just do it because it's actually a very short book. So we might squeeze one more in there. But this one is really long and it's a very high priority. Like I need to read it. I need to get it done in the next week. It's non-negotiable. So we'll just have to see how that happens. But um, with The Witching Year, I have already read this. So I'm going to insert the footage of me talking about this book uh, right here. Okay, hi, I just came back from my walk and oh my gosh, my hair is a disaster now. It was cute before and now it's just absolutely a disaster. I finished my book on my walk and it was just great. I just feel so much better after going for a walk. I was really like, just had a lot of like energy that I needed to get out. Um, so that walk was really, really nice. And I just finished The Witching Year, a memoir of Ernest Fumbling Through Modern Witchcraft by Diana Helmuth. And I, I loved this. I loved this. Like, I think I'm actually going to give it five stars. I... <laughs> I let me try to explain this book a little bit. So this is a memoir from a journalist and a millennial white woman who has had basically no previous connection to spirituality or religion and is actually quite anti-religion in a lot of ways, just anti, not anti-religion, but like anti-structure uh, <laughs> uh, religion. And um, just because, you know, there has been um, a lot of issues with formal religion in the way that it treats women and queer people. So she was struggling a lot with religion as a concept, but at the same time, she still, you know, wants to feel that pull of community and there is something very powerful about believing in something and worshiping something. And so she seeks out um, a trial year of witchcraft and she kind of takes a look at all the different um, angles of it like witchcraft and neo-paganism and all of the different ways in which um, witchcraft exists in the world today. And honestly the reason that I love this book so much is because I do feel such a kinship with this author. We're very similar people um, just like her. I also am not a spiritual person but I'm like very much drawn to the world of witchcraft as I always have been and it's this combination of like being such a skeptic by nature but also just wanting to believe that this is something that can be real and actually I do have a couple other like witchcraft books I read these two books in my witch witchy vlog um I'll link it down below um I read Mountain Magic 
Explore the Secrets of Old Time Witchcraft by Rebecca Bayer. And this one is The Green Wiccan Spellbook, um, a compendium of magical knowledge. So I did like, you know, look into <laughs> uh, witchcraft a little bit just because just I thought it would be fun and interesting. And I'm just genuinely drawn to everything in there. And then my friend, Caitlin Bandy from Bandy's Books, she sent me Brujas, The Magic and Power of Witches of Color by Lorraine uh, Montague. And it's very interesting because a lot of these authors actually are mentioned in The Witching Year because Diana Helmuth puts at the beginning of each of the section, she puts quotes from like, from famous people within the witch, Wiccan, pagan community. So she, every single section is uh, titled with a quote. And I think there was some actually, there was definitely a couple of them from Lorraine Montague, which is really cool, or Mon Montague, I'm probably mispronouncing her last name. But um, I have I have read this and really enjoyed this one as well. Although um, I, uh, this one, this one even more so, like, these two are both like basically handbooks guides to exactly how to be a witch. And this one is more um, about the history and kind of social uh, examination of these people and also a lot of very helpful witch information as well. So I have my own little collection of witch books. So this is like, this is what I'm trying to say is that like this is something that I was already interested in. So because of that, it really just clicked with me. Like this is, the author is a person who's experiencing so much of what I've experienced with my interest in it. And I'm not going to, you know, go and be a witch for a year like this author did, but I just think, you know, that kinship immediately like connected with me. Like how do you tap into this like ancient, magical, uh, very nature focused, um, kind of religion when we live in like modern cement skyscrapers and cities, you know, that is very much at the core of what she's talking about. Like, how do you con connect with the concepts in witchcraft while still being in a modern society? They seem like they don't go together. And then on top of that, you add on just something that is just my favorite thing when it's a combination of memoir and journalistic deep dive into a specific topic, typically one I'm interested in. That's why I picked up these kind of books. Um, it does say this is perfect for fans of AJ Jacobs who I've never read from before and Mary Roach who I have read from before and love her work. So it's the writing style, it's the casual tone that she has. It's And really this reads like, um, a diary because it's like every day of her uh, little <laughs> witchy journey. So it does read like a very personal um, journal entry. It is truly a memoir and those moments when she starts to kind of make the connection between what the religion of neo-paganism, like what the concepts in there connect to her real life when the, those moments happen, like that's when I think the book really, really shines. So for me, this book really was everything that I wanted. It was exactly what I was looking for, exactly what I asked for. It just, it just nailed it for me. I really, really loved this. Um, I did look at some of the reviews on Goodreads and I feel like there were some people who are actually a part of the community, like whether they were just starting on their uh, witchy journey or they've been in the community for a really long time. And I think that probably they didn't love this as much because she doesn't necessarily come in to any like super grand conclusions but it's like to me that makes sense because if you are only doing something for a year like even if you are devoting so much time to it like that's just not like it's not enough really to be fully you know invested and committed and she really is coming at this from like a journalistic angle like she wants to understand um, which is what I'm interested in. I don't really care about the conclusions that she comes to because that's not, to me, that's not the point. Um, and I think that, you know, she's someone who is not doing everything correctly because part of her struggle and even, you know, me reading all of these books, one thing that she struggles to understand is like, there's, witchcraft really doesn't have these like very specific like rules. Um, and so when she's like trying to do it right, like again, this is why I feel such a kinship with this author because I am also the kind of person that like when I embark on a new hobby, like I like want the structure, I want to like do everything correctly and like I want it to feel authentic, but it's just difficult to do. It's really hard. So 
Um, it's just, I enjoyed the way that this is approaching everything. It also, you know, she talks about um, the internal conflict that she has with appropriation, cultural appropriation, and uh, how do you determine what is authentically uh, pagan versus what is just kind of on trend. It's, and I think that's really interesting. She goes into how the religion as a whole is supposed to be very, very eco-focused, and yet there are elements of it that just feel very antithetical and commercialized. And I think that's all super interesting. She talks about how um, the idea of a witch is still very like white focused, even though a lot of the concepts of magic come from people and communities of color and how um, you know those communities seem to be demonized, whereas other forms and idols of witchcraft are more like romanticized because they're white. So she gets into all of that, which I just think is really fabulous. She talks about um, how anything like ritualistic, it's very difficult for a non-spiritual person to engage with in an authentic way and how part of learning to embrace a spiritual journey like she's trying to do is really coming to terms with um, your ability to like pull from other religions which I just think it's it's all just fascinating it's fascinating to me I love the way this was done I love the writing I felt like this was just exactly what it set out to be and I was just ah fabulous fabulous I'm so happy that I decided to pick this up because it was like right up my alley there you go that is the witching year like I said absolutely adored it I phenomenal really really love this one and now let's talk a tiny bit kicking off crying in H Mart um, I am about 23% of the way through this. Crying in H Mart, a very popular, well-known memoir. I, well, at least it's well-known in the booktube world. Um, I'm not sure how well-known. It's not that old. I think it's. I think this came out in 2019 or not not long ago. Oh, 2021. So yeah. Um, but since its release, it's really made waves in the booktube world. A lot of people have read this. This is about. A woman, Michelle Zahner, a lead singer of the band Japanese Breakfast. This is her memoir chronicling her time with her mother who is dying of cancer. And it's about her and her mother's relationship as well as uh, their bond through food. The relationship they share between cooking and Korean dishes. And it's just this really down to earth, honest memoir about this family going through a horribly emotional time. Um, so I started this and I will not lie to you. I'm a little bit, I, I, this is a five star prediction in that so many people love it. And everybody that I, has ever read it is like, this is beautiful. I will not lie that I'm a little bit nervous because I really, I don't do well with anything like medical or like I, I do that. There's a lot of medical anxiety that I have. And so reading things that are just such a, a close and, and intense description of really any medical situation is, um, that's very challenging for me. And I do know that it's horribly sad. And I, I don't know that I'm really, um, I don't know that I'm really into that. And so that's the thing. That's why I've been so hesitant to pick up this book because I know it's going to be amazing. I know it's powerful. I know, I, I know really like how good it is. And yet I also know that it's very sad. So that was my hesitancy about picking it up, but I have finally done it. I'm over the 20% mark. So we are going and we are doing it. And because I have a, a long day today where I have a lot of tasks that I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be listening to this on audiobook because Michelle Zahner does read it herself. Love that. I do intend to finish this today so I will come back and give you my full thoughts after I've finished this. Hello, hi, I have an update but I do have to make this fast. I'm going to kind of speed run this part because I have to get to book club in a couple minutes but good news. I have finished Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. I finished this a couple days ago. Yesterday I don't remember. Um, yeah, crying in H Mart, um, I, it's tough. It's tough. I don't really want to give this like a number rating. Like I don't think it's fair to rate it with a number because it is just, 
uh, a, such a close personal story, which, you know, that sounds kind of, you know, obvious because it's a memoir, but like, it just, it really, I saw that Cindy from, um, with Cindy, I saw her review of it and she said something like, this book really feels like it's just for the author. Like it doesn't really feel like it's for anybody else. And I really agree with that. And that's why this feels like, it, it doesn't even matter really what other people think of it. And I know a lot of people do love this. I, it's, it's not that I don't like it or it's like, it's not that I had any problems with it. It's just, I don't really do well with the medical things and just like reading about the cancer was very, very difficult. And I, I was not really in a headspace to actually read this, even though like I'd always wanted to read, which again, this is why I hesitated to pick it up because I knew that this subject matter was just not something that I was going to react well to. Um, I do think it's well done. I, I think there's a lot of value in reading it. I really loved learning about um, Michelle's life um, and her Korean family and the element of her being a Korean American. I, I really enjoyed all of that. I loved the discussions of the family and their bond. I thought that was really beautiful. And it was just, of course, just heartbreaking and so sad. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's beautiful, obviously it's gorgeous. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's tough. Um, so I think that like, yes, it is a good book, but I just didn't have a good reading experience with it because it is just, uh, it's just so sad. It's so sad. And I would just wasn't enjoying myself while I was like consuming this very sad story. Um, and also it's quite plainly written. It's very like straightforward, basic. The writing style is very, um, like it's just very conversational, I guess. And that is not typically the way that I like my uh, books. But of course, like this doesn't really, it doesn't make sense to have like a lot of flourish to the writing style in this story. And like, she just very much is just like telling like exactly what happened to her and, um, you know, that makes sense for the story. But again, it's just not like how I typically prefer to consume like memoirs. And honestly, like I usually don't read memoirs unless there's something like specific about them, like, or like I really know the author or something like that. And then this is not a case that I know anything about the author other than um, I know people really love this book. I prefer my memoirs to have other, like a different structure. I think. Um, and so with that, I, I'm happy I read this and I definitely will be keeping this in my collection. I definitely like, I, you know, I would give it a high rating. It's just, I don't feel like it's fair. The critis criticisms that I have about it really don't have anything to do with the book or the story. It's just like my personal preference. And that's not fair to give a rating to a memoir of the, like of this uh, caliber based on like how I personally feel so I'm just uh, yeah that's it I did enjoy it I'm glad I read it finally it's been on my shelf for so long I'm so happy to have finally gotten to this um and that's a good segue into I just started reading The Night Parade a speculative memoir by Jamie Nakamuri Lynn and this I'm not very far into this I am just um at page 70 and I, I'm stunned with this already. I'm blown away by this. This is what I mean when I say I need some other kind of structure with my memoirs, because this is, this is about a woman who um, has, you know, a long history of bipolar disorder, which is something I'm not super familiar about, which is, you know, I'm happy to read about it because I have not come across a lot of media about bipolar disorder. So I'm going to be very interested to learn more. Um, it's also about, she is a, a losing a parent to um, cancer as well. So, um, much in conversation with crying in H Mart. And I didn't know that actually, this is my book club picked this and I, I didn't know that. And I, uh, this, that might be an element that I struggle with for sure. Um, but the third thing is that she is talking, telling you about like Japanese folklore and she's connecting this like experience with her mental illness and her father's death with this Japanese folklore. And I, it's kind of just like this very, like right now it's like this very dream like quality almost to it because it's very non-linear in the way that she's talking about these things. She's kind of just connecting based on these stories that she wants to tell. And it's a lot about how we communicate 
through stories and like it's hard to even like imagine what this is going to be in its entirety because I am just not very far into it at this point but um, I'm really enjoying it right now and like it's very clear to me that I just in my memoirs I prefer like a different angle to them like I really liked I Am I Am I Am by Maggie O'Farrell which was a memoir that she she tells her life through the lens of these like you know handful of times that she experienced like was very close to death and that was fascinating um, this is very interesting with the Japanese folklore. I'm all about that. I get to both hear the folklore stories and then hear how she's connecting it to her experience. And then in something like the witching year where it's just a year long, um, like she's actively trying to do something for a year and then telling us about that experience. So I do think like a more structured framework or that has like a bit more of a hook is more what I'm into when it comes to memoirs rather than like just a straight like linear memoir like crying in h mart um another example i have it on my shelf over there that's the anthropocene reviewed by john green which is both kind of essays and also a memoir and i just absolutely adore anthropocene reviewed and that is like the essays um this format is the way that he tells his memoir same thing with encyclopedia of an ordinary life another memoir i absolutely love because of the unique formatting and really it's the structure of these things is really what does it for me. So I'm adoring Night Parade. Uh, if you liked In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, now I'm basically just, you know, listing every memoir that I know. But especially if you liked In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, I think uh, you could really, really love this. And I'm saying that and I'm barely 70 pages into it. So with all of that said, I am now going to my first book club discussion where we uh, are going to discuss the first 70 pages of this. And I'm so excited to talk to my friends about this because it's, it's, it's stunning. Hello, hello. We have actually made it to the end of this vlog because I just finished reading The Night Parade, a speculative memoir by Jamie Nakamura Lin. And I, yeah, I was going to update earlier, but actually I just ended up flying through this. Um, and I, I'm honestly surprised that I was able to finish this in time because I almost uh, did not think that was going to happen. So um, the night parade. Last thing I told you was um, I, I had just started the book and now having finished it, I have a much like a better grasp of what this is. Um, after I did have that first conversation with my book club, one thing that was kind of very common that we all felt was that uh, the beginning of this book is a little bit dense. It's very dense. It's very like, it, it feels almost dreamlike. There's a lot of different things. There's like her story and then there's the Japanese folklore and there's some uh, like philosophy or academic elements of it as well. So it's just like, it's very, uh, it, there's not so much of an anchor point and that can feel very like disorienting, I guess. Um, and so at, in the beginning of the book, you really have to kind of fight to just figure out what is going on. But as the book progresses, I found that it got much more straightforward or maybe I just got used to what was going on. I did really enjoy the format of this because it is a memoir. We do get a lot of our um, narrator, our author's story but we do have these like moments, these bits of Japanese folklore, which she is, she'll, she'll tell you a story and then she'll um, find a way to relate that story to her life. And I did find that structure just very satisfying. One criticism I will say of this though, is that if you are picking this book up for the uh, discussions about bipolar disorders specifically, I would say like, it does not go as in depth with the bipolar disorder as I thought it would, uh, just based on like the blurb on the back. It's it does talk about it, um, but it doesn't get into like every single moment of her life with it. It really is just she's just talking about she's reflecting on a time when it was like you know less controlled than currently, and it's just. Um, it's a little bit more like vague than I think I would have anticipated based on the blurb. But honestly, like I was okay with that because 
yeah, I, I was interested in learning more about the disorder in general, but like, I, I, I'm okay with the information that we got. And I found the other parts of her life that she brings up later in the, in, towards the second half of the book, I found those to be very engaging and a discussion I wasn't expecting to have. So yeah, there's, I mean, I just really appreciate the kind of mosaic combination of themes and structure and personal story plus academia plus um, this, you know, folklore element. I just really enjoyed how much there was in there because that is really what I need for a memoir to work for me. I, I want an interesting structure. Also, the illustrations are really beautiful. Let me just try to find, let me just flip to one. Like on the beginning of each of the chapters, there is an illustration with what it looks like. So this is actually, this one is the actual night parade, the illustration of the night parade. So each of the chapters begins with a little illustration of the uh, folk tale that we're gonna go over. And I just think it's really charming. The illustrations are really, really beautiful and it's just well done. I found it relatively easy to read again once I got a sense for what we were, what we were doing. Um, the beginning is, yeah, the beginning is, not challenging but like it does feel dense and it does feel like okay gotta kind of put on my brain here to, to get to you know read this but I do think it does get much easier and I enjoyed it a lot I really really loved this honestly um would I give it five stars I don't know I would definitely give it at least four if not you know maybe 4.5 I really enjoyed this um and if you're going to write a memoir, this is how I would prefer it to be written. So with that, let's talk about um, the other books, the other memoirs that I read. So these are the three that I read in this vlog and let's kind of talk about my ratings. Um, in first place, my favorite one is absolutely The Witching Year, a memoir of Ernest Fumbling Through Modern Witchcraft by Diana Helmuth. I just loved this author's voice. I loved her writing style. I just felt very connected to her. I felt like she was funny, relatable. I felt like she was asking the questions that I wanted her to ask. Like the questions that would come up in my mind or the thoughts that I would have about these subjects, she would then immediately ask. And I really appreciate that because there's nothing more annoying than when I have a question about a subject that I'm like sitting there thinking about and it just, it doesn't come up and we just are moving right along and we don't kind of get into those details that I picked up the book because I want to know. So I really appreciate that um, Diana Helmuth, she just she just nailed it, it in my opinion. I really, really enjoyed this memoir. And then in second place, I would give it to The Night Parade. I really adored the creative structure. And then in third place, That's Crying in H Mart. Um, yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people really love this book and I don't think it was bad by any means, but the writing is just not to my personal taste. It's quite plain, it's quite straightforward and um, it kind of, it lacks the artistic quality, I guess I would say. Um, not to say that this isn't like a piece of art or something, but just like it lacks a bit of the craft element that I look for in any type of book. Um, but specifically with memoirs, that's just, I, I tend not to enjoy just like a really straightforward memoir and that is what this is. So, um, but that being said, I, I know a lot of people really, really love this and it is a very touching, heartbreaking, personal, raw story. So like I, it, it is one of those things where I'm just like, I, this is why I can't even rate this book and I really wouldn't give it, I'm not going to give it a star rating because, um, how do you even... How do I even really personally, how do I give this any type of rating? So I don't know. Um, but there we go. Three books for Memoir May. And yeah, this was a really great experience. It was nice to get, especially like this one has been on my TBR for so long. It's been nice to get through these. Let me know down in the comments if there are any other memoirs out there that you think I would really enjoy based on uh, what I said about these. 
and or if there's just one that you think that everybody should read because I'm definitely down to do this little memoir may experiment again in the future. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, week, month, and year, and I will see you back here really soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.